Welcome back for the second half. It's 20 minutes plus four minutes stoppage time. This time, plenty of time to talk more to Shane Nicholson, to Laurie Madden, and we'll bring James Gregg in as well for his weekly roundup. Quite busy this week. Absolutely, Plen plenty going on. Plenty going on. We missed you last week. Uh, you know, I was I, I could only sort of speak for two minutes about what was going on. I didn't have your depth of coverage. Oh, so well, there we are. I know there that are. Uh, if you follow golf, rugby union, rugby league. Uh, He's got it. I didn't have it. I didn't have it last <laughs> week. Um, Laurie, um, we kicked off with Sheffield Wednesday first half. We'll do that second half. Conspicuous by his absence in the 1-1 with QPR on Tuesday, the top scoring player, perhaps creatively the most influential player, Fernando Forestieri. Uh, as, as good as that's a plus for, for Wednesday, is there a slight negative there in that when he's not there, he can't win a tight game or didn't on Tuesday? Well, I would think the manager would probably think he's got enough in his... I mean, really, they, they, they did enough to win the game on Tuesday night, but obviously if you miss penalties and you miss your chances, good chances, um, then you're always going to have a struggle. But I think where Forestieri does do something that in a tight game he's liable... I mean, I haven't seen him score a poor goal yet, you know, what I consider mm -hmm. a poor goal. Um, he scores wonder goals. He scores goals, you know, like... you know. And he's got a short back lift and he can hit balls and he sees things early, you know. So, uh, I mean, he cut, cuts in from the left-hand side and calls one into the top corner or he's on the edge of the box and he's got such a short back lift and he whacks it and, and he works the keeper. And most of the time, the keeper has to make a save, you know, whether they save it or whether it goes in. But he works them, you know. If you look at the number of shots he has, most of them tend to be on target, you know. So... Any team would, you know, is, is a big loss if, if he's not available, you know. He's quicksilver and slippery in his movement. You're never quite sure what he's yeah. going to do next. The opposition is second-guessing, and he yeah. can win you a game in a split second. That, that said, you know, about the goals, he has got a couple of close-range headers as well, maybe two or three, which for a little guy is quite surprising. I'm always surprised when I see him pop up and head those goals in on the six-yard box. But, yeah, so. if, I think he'd probably be remembered for... Now, you're talking about getting in the six-yard box, but I think a lot of his goals are scored from outside the box, which is unusual because most of the goals are scored inside the box. So yeah. he can give you another another dimension, you know. But he comes back at home as well, which is important, isn't it? Very important. I, mean, I was at, I was at Deepdale last weekend. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, I was, and um, and uh, you know, from looking at it, from you know, I've not seen Wednesday play much at all this season. But watching you know Hooper and Nui up front. For me, I know Forestier obviously played and then got sent off, but for those two being your main strikers, for me there wasn't enough movement up, up at that top end of the field. There was, mm. They were clouting it towards Nui, and Hooper wasn't seeing much of the ball and he wasn't working enough for the ball. And when Forestieri got sent off, all the shape was gone then. And, mm. you know, I think that the will have missed him. Yeah, definitely. It certainly did sound a really poor and uncharacteristic performance. Although Preston, I hate that term, well organised, but I've seen them do that the whole city. Same score, 1 0 dominated the game. So, organisation can do that. How do you see the game at Hull? Uh, independent view, Shane, y you follow it. Uh, Hull, top of the table, Steve Bruce, I don't know if you come mm -hmm. across Steve and you, you know him. Clearly a lot of good players and a very good manager. Yeah, well obviously we lost Sam Klukas to Hull uh, yeah. from Chesterfield and he's gone on there and, and, you know, and done himself proud there. So, listen, the championship every single year is the same. You know, you, I wouldn't want to bet on anyone winning the league or w what teams will get promoted. It's um, it, it's a great watch for the neutral for sure because you never know what's going to happen every t every year. Every team beats every team. Mm. Um, so Sam Klukas has done especially well, and and he, he can play anywhere literally. Sometimes that can be a handicap for a player, can't it? Jack he, of all trades. He can actually play in goal as well, believe it, believe it or not. Can he? Yeah, he's a, yeah. He, re he really is a jack of all trades. He's a, yeah. and a great lad as well. Where is he going to be best? Where's his career going to be? I think he'll end up going back to left back, if I'm honest. Where you played? Yeah. Do you? Mm. Right. Attacking left back. Mm. Uh, but the, you know, you, you, the great thing for Steve Bruce is he knows that player can come on as a substitute or st or even start anywhere. So that, how do you see the game uh, go? Just uh, Shane, I should have mentioned, was a fitness coach, rehabilitation and fitness coach at Chesterfield until quite recently. So. Uh, Looking to get, you're not looking to get back into football, are you? You're looking for something else. Well, you never say never, Alan. Yeah. Never say never. So yeah, I'm. I'm um, my eyes have been open since I've been out of the game. Cause I've not been out of the game for thirty odd years, or ever been out of the game. Now I'm realising that I can actually do different things. I'm loving what I'm doing with Sporting Chance. Um, if something came of that, then that'd be fantastic. I think that's a good point because we were talking before the show with all the millions of pounds sploshing and splashing into football. 
you'd have thought there'd be a job yeah. for somebody like Shane yes. to, go, to go around and put a positive where the negative was in your career, being banned for drug taking. Mm. I know people might say, oh, he's being rewarded for doing something quite shameful, but actually he's, he's well, paid his dues. Absolutely. He can now, you know, for, for a massive... Uh, you know, particularly, I'm thinking from the Premier League sort of financial aspect here. Obviously, for them, they don't want to have their players, their best, better players in the Premier League, and these young lads coming through. They don't want them taking drugs and going off the rails and being all over the front pages. They'd rather keep that for the back pages and about the football. And doing what you're doing is clearly, you know, an important role, isn't it? And you know, I think there is probably some scope for that. I think there is. I mean, it's a, you know, to pay somebody full time to go on a lecturing tour mm. of all the clubs that you could. You could you could do them within a season. I'm pretty sure. What do you what do you think the I response is the like? What do you ones. feel the response is like when you get that? Well, I believe that the feedback's been been really positive. You know, when I'm there, it's a bit daunting at times because if I'm if I'm completely honest, my biggest fear is always talking in front of people. So for me personally, it, it, I'm conquering something anyway by talking. Yeah. And, but but as well as that, it's therapeutic for me as well. So it works for me as well. It's not just for them, but it works for me as well talking about it. Even though it's 18 years down the line, there's still things now that I talk about that I necessarily didn't talk about then. Do you talk to the academy or do you talk to the first team players and the second team players? It, it's very rarely you talk to first team players, which, which I find I find. That's the point I was just trying to come to. Is, is you know? that because you're not allowed to, you're not invited to? I actually don't know. I don't, you know, I'm just sent out to whoever it is. Um, the next one I have actually is Man United under 18s. It never seems to be any first team. Norwich City um, allowed their first team. We went to the, speak to their first team, but um, you know, I'm just obviously guided to go to a certain place. But it does make you wonder a little bit, not just necessarily over what you go in there for, like drugs and alcohol. You only have to see the number of times players go on social media <laughs> and they don't fully understand the implications of what they say on social media and they yeah. come a cropper. Yeah. So yeah. they obviously need some sort of training on social media. What you can is acceptable and unacceptable. Without because, doubt. And I'm not sure what they think, oh, they're first team players, they're adults, they should know what they're doing. Not necessarily. That's, that's, that's the point I was coming to yeah. about when you yeah. say you do There are life skills that are needed, but in, in, in terms of the one that we're talking about tonight, drug taking, You'd like to think it was a, a very small minority. Certainly there's a potential for people to be caught now uh, with the, the, the rigorous nature of the testing. How widespread is it in, in the game, do you think? I don't think it's got any worse or got any better. Uh, I really don't. I think, it, I think it is rife in the game. I think addictions have spread from, from drinking to drugs to, to sex to gambling. You know, I think it, for the whole lot, I think there'll be... At every single club, I believe there'll be one that does that will do be you? addicted. To, I do, every yeah. single club. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I believe. Everyone looking around. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, don't I, don't believe that. I really do <laughs> believe that. There's a fine line you see between professional sportsmen and addicts. A yeah. fine, fine line. And it's not a deterrent to an addict to think he might be caught tomorrow. It's not enough of a deterrent to think he might. One hundred percent isn't though. So is, is, are the penalties deterrent enough? Then should pe should players be just simply banned, kicked out of the game, full stop? No, because if that was the case, then I wouldn't have been given a second chance. Mm. You know, people yeah. always deserve a second chance. They really do. Always deserve a second chance. I have to say that. But if you you know you have to pay you have to pay the price for the crime that you committed. Once you've done that, be allowed your second chance. Be reformed. Yeah. Well, come on, after we hear from James, to uh, the question of um, the condition, conditions and the environment of being a professional footballer, the highs on the field uh, during 90 minutes, Saturday uh, and midweek, which can't then be replicated by anything else in life. And when they're away from that arena, just, you know, kind of mm. how do you get your kicks? I mean, it particularly applies to ex-players, and we'll ask Laurie about that as well, because I think that even the most even-tempered character, which I know Laurie is, quite, uh, you know, uh, compared to, to many players, misses that, that high when he's no longer playing. So we'll come to those issues after we hear from 
James on everything else, everything else. Absolutely, there's loads going on in the Sheffield area, so we'll try and get, get through this really quickly. Um, well, eighth place, Sheffield United, they're only four points off sixth place, Coventry, but yet they're only six ahead of 16th place, Rochdale, who they play against this weekend. Kil Keith Hill's side welcome the Blades on Saturday at three o'clock. Well, Sheffield Wednesday take on Hull tomorrow night, already touched on that massive game that uh, for Sheffield Wednesday, um, obviously coming off the back of a one-all draw on Tuesday night and a one-nil defeat to Preston last week and um, it's anyone's game that one of course you can catch that one on television as well uh, non-league football now Hallam FC uh, they lost 4-2 to Winterton Rangers last week uh, very tough game coming towards the end of the season Pro the manager. probably not good enough Sack to play the I'm afraid. Well, no, he's done wonders, hasn't he, Brian Handley, <laughs> since being there. Yeah. Um, I know we'll take it. And talking right talking of new managers as well, there's uh, James Colliver, who yeah. um, he didn't get off to a winning start for Sheffield FC. They lost two 0 last weekend, but they travelled to sorry, they welcome Gresley to the Coach and Horses Ground do this you, weekend. Do you know who our guests are next week? Go on, two of them. Me. Oh. You've just mentioned them. All oh, right, okay. Both Ryan and James. Yeah. Very good. Very yeah, good. they're our guests. And would you believe they they used to play together as kids? Oh, really? They're old mates, yeah. Oh, so right. the world's oldest club and second oldest have got old teammates going back to boyhood. Very good. So, uh, you know, they scrap a bit as well, I'm told. Well, no, so that in here. I'm not sure. I might have to rearrange it so that Ryan sits there and James sits That's over here. That's fine, I'll sit where Warren sits. To go over there. That's fine, Mike. But anyway, those two guys are in next week, along with Michael Morgan, who's uh, the most senior journalist football journalist on this whole patch he even predates me really? well, yeah it goes some, back a long, long takes way some serious it. doing yeah. me <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll come on to the Sheffield right. Steelers now uh, in a game that sprung an 8-0 uh, hiding upon us that was 10-0 on aggregate I'll whisper that one very quietly let's forget the Challenge Cup and look towards the league because the English Ice Hockey League is still up for grabs a Sheffield Steelers they travel to Dundee um, uh, and sorry they welcome Dundee to the arena uh, before traveling to Coventry on Sunday um, uh, rugby Union, well, the Tigers are now there 11 points clear at the top of National 3 North. They're rewarded with a weekend off as some of the other clubs play rearranged matches from the inclement weather we had over the winter period. While well, Sheffield Rugby Club, they travel west to play against Lim, um, who are in fifth in the table. So that's a real uh, six-pointer, to use a footballing term, after a super 24-20 win last week against Stockport. Uh, Sheffield Sharks, they've got, a, they've got a weekend off as well, uh, but they can enjoy um, that after a fantastic win over the Surrey Scorchers, 78-69 that was last weekend. And they've got a little cut run coming up, of course, which we'll be talking all about on next week's show as well. Sheffield Eagles now uh, in the Rugby League. Two wins from three to start the championship com uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mark Aston will be very happy with that, even though he, he questioned his side's commitment, actually, in the Sheffield Telegraph this week. Uh, they play um, at home um, tomorrow night against the Swinton Lions. And quietly, and I'm going to touch wood here when I say this, uh, there could be a few tries in there because Swinton Lions um, aren't looking too good this season. They lost all three of their, uh, of their first matches. So if you want to see some tries, get yourself down to the Sheffield Hallam University Sports Park to watch that one. Um, and in golf, we'll finish off individually, as we always do on this roundup. And Matthew Fitzpatrick, he's playing in the Honda Classic on the PGA Tour this week. He opened up with a one over par 71. Uh, needs a bit of work um, to make the weekend. Danny Willett isn't playing now this week. I knew those two were going to mention. Danny awesome. Willett and Matt Fitzpatrick, they're really? regulars. We've not managed to get Joe Root in this time, but I did see his granddad on Sunday. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, I saw Joe's uh, granddad. I said, we've yet to see young Joe in the studio. And he said, well, he's, he's never here. Yeah, he's never, he's, here. He's, he's he's never, never here. here. He's never in the country. That's Don, gentleman Don, yes, who you know as well. Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. Granddad, Sir Don yeah. Root. Yeah. yeah, Sir Don Root, it is indeed. <laughs> Thanks, James. No worries uh, at all. Stick around. I, I saw the Blades uh, last Saturday. Uh, Sheffield United beating Port Vale. A, a much-needed victory. Only by one goal to know. Great goal from Billy Sharp. But, you know, I thought it was a, just a move in the right direction, the way they played. It wasn't a great performance, but they just got the ball forward. New mm. system, 3-5-2. Wing-backs going forward, yeah. including our friend John Braidford. Yeah, and they just got the ball forward quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gave Absolutely. themselves a chance of scoring. So let's hope that's a turning point. Mm. Um, Forestieri, we mentioned, and, and the importance to Wednesday, and he's just the kind of player who, at Hull, big match player too, you know, just could turn that game. Could yeah, turn it. well, it'd be interesting because uh, Frank Barlow, the former assistant manager for Wednesday, he was doing a scouting report for Hull, so um, I wonder if he knows that Forestieri is available, because obviously <laughs> he would have gone back with a different report, so it'd be interesting 
what his view of yeah. the game was and what he said to Steve Bruce, Bruce ahead of the game. That would be a handicap to Frank doing that job without that key player there because I think we can all bet on the fact that he's going to start for Wednesday. Are <laughs> you surprised if he didn't? Yeah, I mean, I would think nowadays they've got the homework done. I would imagine uh, Steve, you know, it depends how managers look at it. You're top of the table, you're at home. Are you worried about anyone that comes to the KC Stadium? Or do you say, right... Um, they could cause us one or two problems. Do we need to sort of put a man on him or do something? You know, do Steve we to... Bruce was very respectful of Sheffield Wednesday and the turnaround in the club when Hull were at Hillsborough for the 1-1 draw. He made a particular point of that. So he got a guy on the bench called Lucas Zhao and I made a point in my, in my Sheffield Telegraph column this week of uh, giving him a slight kick up the rear uh, following little things I've heard around the club uh, and also... The manager, or head coach Carlos Carvalho, had said, referred to him having his head in it in the clouds mm. just recently. Just one or two things you, you hear that he got the attitude that he'd arrived, and he's not by a long shot, has he? Well, Talents are plenty, but well, obviously, if that's what the manager feels, then the easiest thing to do is not play him. You know, if he feels he's arrived, then he thinks he should be in the team. Mm. And obviously, if the manager doesn't play him, then that sends out a message to him that you're not one of my best 11 players and you're not, you know, not someone that I'm going to trust to put in the team to get a result. But he's got the, so much talent, abundance of talent. Uh, this is the time for him to come to the game. Uh, as yeah, a he's, substitute, he's got a lot in his locker, hasn't he? No doubt about it. I, I just think he's an unpredictable talent. You know, you're not quite sure what he's going to do. Mm. But that obviously causes defence's problems when it comes off. Um, but it also, if you're not quite sure what he's going to do, it's difficult to read sometimes if you're a teammate. Yeah, sure. That footwork, uh, you don't know quite where he's going with it, do you? Yeah. You know, you as really I say, don't. if it comes off, he opens up defences and, it, and it's fantastic. You know, you've yeah. got a way up. How many times he's going to do that with the other side of it? That is a talent that doesn't quite come to fruition. So yeah. it's that balancing act. And obviously the manager's thinking, maybe, you know, we need more, we need more end product from him. Yeah, I'm sure it will come to fruition. He's still only 22, but certainly he just needs to keep his feet on the floor by all accounts. OK, let's go to, back to our, to our main theme. The environment of being a professional football, the emotional environment, and how, Shane, you can't replicate that. Is, is that part of, you talked about your upbringing and that got you into alcohol and drugs, but is that play a part as well, that players have got that high? How do you replace that high? Well, it's very difficult, very, very difficult. You know, you depending on how long your career is. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I was very fortunate considering what I'd done to have a 22-year career, and you do kind of become institutionalised. Players that finish the game that say that they don't miss the adulation, I believe, are liars because it's that that you have to get over as well. It's it's the fact that people don't want to really want your autograph and want to know you and things like that yeah. as well. It's that that you have to take into account as well, and that's quite you know. It's kind of humbling as well to, to try and do that, but to, to replicate a high, I have my own highs. I did what I did, but yeah. now we're finished. Um, I get my high from just being the person that I am today. That's how I get it. Uh, I also go to church, but uh, my high is coming from just living from day to day, just getting up. I'm so blessed just to get up on a day and have another 24 hours, come and do things like this. I'm very grateful. Yeah, we're oh. very grateful for you being here, and I think oh, the football listen, industry should be grateful for what Absolutely. you do, and I think uh, the football <clears throat> industry should be more alive to it. Um, Laurie, uh, replacing that adulation, uh, as a defender, you didn't quite get the adulation, uh, hero worship that goal scorers got, <laughs> but nevertheless, you played in one of Sheffield Wednesday's finest teams of the modern, well, the finest team of the, the modern era. Well, you talk about the media, which yeah. obviously I've been involved with, such as you. If you win 5 0 and the centre forward scores a hat trick, you don't go and say, Well, the defence did well, keep on a clean sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I never really did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can know who you're going to go to. No. So, yes, I, I, yeah. I sort of uh, remember those days. <laughs> Where you got ignored completely. Yeah, you, got, you, know, you walk out there, no one wants to talk to you. you know, so, um, there was no adulation then. If you win 5 0, it's, it's the strikers that get all the. I know. never used to ask Laurie. You want to try, try that next week in your, cal in your column? <laughs> if, if Wednesday or United win yeah. this week, just say, What a great game Neil Collins had. 
I could try it, couldn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. Say that. Just for one week only. Just one week, yeah. <laughs> Just to appease Laurie. Yeah. Well, Laurie, <laughs> against that, though, Laurie was always the guy that would do an interview. So he came into his own when they'd lost 4-0 four, four yeah. or 5 nil. <laughs> Who are we going to get? The strikers would go missing. You yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't yeah. find yeah, them anywhere. Course. And it'd be Laurie. Who good old Laurie who do the interview? Yeah. That, that's that's what happened, wasn't it? Laurie? That's the way. It, yeah. So yeah. Of, you know. So from that point. But just going back to your point, mm. I mean, um, we were talking a bit earlier. How, you know, you know, the, there's a big program on Tuesday night, and they're after a game. If you've won and the high and everything, chances are some of the players will want to go out. You know, on a Saturday on a game. You know, whereas most people after the game probably want to go home because they've got to get up the next morning. So they're out of sync players and then when they finish I go along with a bit about the adulation and everything but I think it's more than that when you're a player you have a time structure you need to get up for training in the morning you know you go there you got you meet people face to face you have a bit of banter a bit of a laugh you're actually being challenged to be good at trying to be better at what you get then on a Saturday you've got all the the ingredients of a match day yeah. that goes on you know the build up yeah. to it the adulation that goes on the autograph and then if you win you're on a high and you might get a nice few quid at the end of it then compare that when you finish, you wake up on a Monday morning, what am I going to do? Mm, yeah. I've got no time structure, I haven't got to be anywhere at a certain period of time, I don't have the face-to-face -face contact, I'm not being challenged to be better at what I'm going to do, I don't get the adulation, and then you don't probably don't get the money. So all of a sudden it's quite a big change from being a player to being a non-player. Loss of identity, loss of self-esteem. Yeah. And also, also the other thing which people forget, a lot of players break up their relationships come under enormous pressure when they split up you know i'd like to there'd be like facts and figures there but you, i mean you must know a lot of i players. think i think it's over 75 percent it's higher than the national average yeah yeah, yeah. if i as professional yeah. footballers break up you know all of a sudden your wife sees you going off training or going on tours and that next minute you're mm. around their feet all day long yeah. and obviously not yeah, used yeah. to it trying to cope with it and all of a sudden yeah. bickering starts that and before you know it you know you, you yeah. split up and therefore there becomes you know, an emotional side to it as well. Mm. So all of a sudden, that is all into the, the mix when you, you you finish playing. Not you know, Shane. Not everyone everyone can be a, a coach or a manager or or go into the media. You know, that, that's only that only covers a very small percentage of ex players. What would you say to someone? Obviously, your circumstances are different. But you know, from a lot of the teammates that you had, what have they ended up doing? Well, um, for, listen, personally for me, you know, it's about finding what your purpose in life is. Yeah. That's what it is. For me, football wasn't my purpose. It's just something I found that I was good at. My dad enjoyed football, so he got me into football. Whatever he'd have been enjoyed at, I'd have gone and done it. So I found football was just, for me, it was just a hobby. Now I've, it's about finding your purpose after football. What is, is my purpose is in this life? It? Is this your purpose? I believe it is, yeah. It's getting, it's getting out there. I really do think it is. You know, and, um, and sharing what, what I've shared tonight, or a bit of it tonight. Mm. This, we should add, is it's not a bleeding hearts routine for footballers, <laughs> yeah. because it, the, anybody who plays the game professionally, particularly at the rewards level that is attainable There's in the, the game, best, is best very, very lucky. Incredible. But I think it's drawing attention to the fact that money and, and fame doesn't necessarily buy happiness, whoever you are and whatever job you're doing. And there's a, a wider problem. It's not just about sportsmen and women, is it? Really? Well, from the outside looking in, you look at you look at some people. You, if you read, pick all the magazines up, watch TV, you'll see all these all the footballers have nice cars, nice houses. But no one actually knows what's going on inside. You know, I had the nice house, the nice car, and everything. People from the outside would think, God, he's got it all. Yeah. But inside my head, it was an absolute mess. Yeah. So you know, you don't know. No, indeed. So grateful uh, to Shane Nicholson for coming in and sharing those thoughts. Certainly valuable ones, certainly valuable ones for a Sheffield United player uh, to heed at the moment. And the offer is there, just to repeat, Shane Nicholson would gladly talk to Jose Baxter uh, to try and help in any way. Thank you ever so much also to Laurie Madden, to James Gregg as ever. We'll see you next week with a roundup and to you for watching. Repeat at 11pm or it's on my YouTube channel. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>